Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to the last part of this super long and kind of annoying section about how to build a custom fields in the administration area of WordPress with our custom plugins. This is the last part of the previously published two parts of this section. And I'm sorry it was kind of long, but I prefer to split it instead of releasing one single tutorial of almost one hour long and it wouldn't be like so good to watch it. So let's jump right into it it and enjoy. Let's use some uh, built-in classes of WordPress. So first let's write a div and let's give it a class called wrap. That's why that's a built-in class of WordPress. That's perfect. Let's paste the h1 inside there and then here we can print inside the PHP tag the settings underscore errors. That is the method that WordPress uses to print responses when you update your field. So successful responses, error responses, stuff like that. And then let's print inside the wrap again let's print the form that is necessary in order to update our custom fields and the action of the form is options.php because we need to point every time we want to update our custom fields we need to point to the options.php is the the options.php is the built-in page of wordpress that handles all the updates, save, delete, and all this kind of stuff for our custom fields. And let's remember to specify the attribute method as post. We don't want to pass it as a get, but as a post. And inside the form, the only thing that we need to do, we need to open the PHP tags. And in here, we can print three things. First, we need to print the settings fields. And the settings fields, in order to print it properly, we need to specify the ID of the options group that we generated before. So if we go back in our admin page, we set the settings, uh, scroll all the way here, the option group, this is the ID of the option group. Let's copy that settings field. Then we need to say to WordPress, do the settings section that we specified before. You would think that here we need to pass the ID of the settings section. That's wrong. We need to pass the slug of the page where the settings section are applied to. That's super confusing. Another thing that's super confusing about this thing. So uh, let's go into our settings. We specify the page to be the Alicat plugin. So we need to pass the Alicat plugin. And the last thing that we need to do is to pass to WordPress to generate the submit button for us. And we don't need to pass any parameter. Perfect. As you notice here, I'm not using any heckle, print, return, nothing. These methods automatically print for us by passing this stuff. So let's save it. Let's go back in our administration error. Let's refresh. And we have an error. Uh, do settings sections doesn't exist. Oh, sorry. Do settings uh, sections, not section. Sorry. Let's refresh. There you go. Look what we have here. We have the settings, that is the same title of the settings that we generated. We have the description in our callback, check this beautiful section. Then we have the title, text example, that if we click, it's clickable and uh, attached to the label. And then we have our label, we write something here, and then the button saves changes. So if we write something and we save the changes, boom, we have the message thanks to the settings error method that we have setting saved and then we have the text example here beautiful if we save changes again we update the page we refresh what we have here it's properly stored fantastic so now you would ask probably like your question is that this is insane this is so much it's too long it's just too complicated in order to use this thing yes i know that's how unfortunately wordpress handles the settings API. The settings API are the worst thing ever in WordPress, are really convoluted. That's why we generated this interface because now if I just want to create, for example, another uh, field uh, called like first name inside this section, the only thing that I need to do is go inside my administration area and update the array of the settings and let's declare another array here. So let's put a comma, array, option group, it's the same. I need to maintain the same op option group. The option name is gonna be like first, first name and I don't wanna pass any callback so I can leave it completely empty and then I wanna update the fields. So the fields, it's gonna be this instead of text example, I can update it to first, name and here this is alicad first name 
Alicat plugin. Let's maintain everything else labeled for first name, first name, and the title is gonna be first name. And then I wanna just update the callback instead of Alicat text example, I want Alicat first name because it's basically identical to it. But of course, instead of passing these, I'm gonna check the first name. Here as a placeholder, I'm gonna say, hey, write your first name. Let's update this method to the Alicat first name method that we're using. Let's go back in our administration area. Let's refresh. And there you go. Now, magically, we have another field with all the settings that we specify. So the first name, the we'll write your first name uh, placeholder. And if we write, like, for example, Alex, and we save changes, changes are saved. So as you notice, all the things that we did before were super complicated and super long, but we did them in order to have a settings API interface in order to programmatically and dynamically generate all the custom fields by using those methods as a bridge to tap the settings API. And as you just saw, in order to add more settings, in this case, I'm just adding input, input fields, but we can add checkboxes, drop downs, whatever you want with the callback function, you can manage all of that. In order to add this thing, I just extended the array in the option in the settings and extended the array in the fields to declare a new field. I didn't have to touch anything in the admin.php template because everything gets printed automatically by the settings field and do settings section of WordPress. So this is really good. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.